Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. foundation for our reasoning together today is the fifth chapter of Ephesians, the 15th through the 20th verse. And we want to look at verses 15 through 20 as the platform from which we can reason and hopefully as we do uh, gain a perspective of where we ought to be as the children of God yes. believers in his word workers in his vineyard empowered to bring about change in a world that is evil. Keep those things in your mind. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, if my thoughts become scattered in your minds, then reach back and try to put them together as you recognize that my references, several of them to begin will, with, will be about what yesterday used to be and today is. When most of us were growing up, it wasn't if you would, you would. Amen. <laughs> you all remember those days? Well, maybe you will, you will. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wasn't a great deal of slack in between there. <laughs> well, you go out and make up your mind, you come back and tell your ma or your pa, I ain't going to do that. Well, I'm not going there. Well, 
no slacking back. They said it, you did it. Amen. And many times, if you had questions to ask, you ask them in a roundabout way. <laughs> it wasn't some direct. It was in a roundabout way. But the point I'm trying to get to is the fact that we as the church have lost that definacy of position and place and relationship. So here Paul talks about be careful how you walk. Which is to say be careful about the kind of life that you are exampling. You and I who declare that we are Christians Raising families, standing for before people, being an example to folk in our neighborhoods and our community, have to look and check ourselves. How are you walking? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Hmm. And how do you check it? You check it by the light of God's word. Yes. For God's word is the only pure light yes. that gives us true <coughs> answers when we examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true answers mm -hmm. when, we ant when we examine ourselves. Some of our examinations, you know, are just lost on how we think and how we feel. Some of our examinations have nothing to do with structure. It's just, well, that's how I got up this morning. And I'm going to move in that vein. Paul is saying to the Ephesians, and he is saying to the Christians, he is saying to those who have declared that they believe in Jesus Christ and that they are living the Christian life, he is de de saying to them, you need to look at yourself. <laughs> and the way you look at yourself is see how you are walking, how you are acting. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when I get up in the morning, and I go and make my first stop to get myself together for the day, and I look in the mirror and I say, oh, how terrible you look. <laughs> how terrible you look. <laughs> and what follows how terrible you look is, you need to do something about that right away. <laughs> You don't need to waste no time. Get it done right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I hear through my wife's words, when you words, when you gonna get yourself together. She don't like the way I look. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and when we look at ourselves. In the light that God gives to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to examine ourselves according to the principles that he has called us to. Yeah. If you truly look at yourself, you don't look like you want to look oh. if you're the child of God yes. that you are. Yes. 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 See how you walk. Mm -hmm. See how you look. Mm -hmm. See how you are put together, how you are formed. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only way that is done is through God's word. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why, that's why we have the title of the sermon today, Understanding God's Will. Last week we talked about the culture of holiness. Mm -hmm. Culture of holiness. We need to understand what holiness is so that we can check our walk and not have the strut of the world. Secularism being satisfied with simply comforting yourself. Mm -hmm. Being simply satisfied with that that you want. Mm -hmm. Forgetting that God has set a path yes. for you to become all that he intended you to be. And remembering that if you are to be his and all he wants you to be, you have to walk in the path that he has set before you, which is a path of righteousness. Yes, yes. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So the question has to be if you're going to walk like you ought to walk. Amen. How do you see the times that you live in? Look at verse 16. How do you see the times in which you live? Mm -hmm. Do you see your time in the world as simply a struggle, something bogging you down, something holding you down? Or do you see the time in which you live as an opportunity to perfect a relationship with God that can only be perfected in the light of the direction that he gives for being holy. Think about it. The direction that he gives for being holy. And then look at the interpretation that Paul has about it. He fashions it, this, this, this that he places in you, he fashions it and gives us the opportunity to understand it through the wine that we drink. Mm -hmm. What does that wine do for you when you drink it? Doesn't that wine give you an energy? Doesn't that wine give you an excitement? Doesn't that my wine give you a restlessness until you accomplish that that is driving you to? Don't leave me now. We've all been there. Yes, sir. When you drink it, it accelerates something in you. If you drink enough of it, you lose a sense of the reality of this world. Amen. Amen. So Paul says, look at what takes place when you drink your wine. Shouldn't you compare it to what the Holy Spirit does to you as a child of God? Shouldn't that kind of excitement be set up yes, in your yes, being yes. as the Spirit takes hold of you where you lose control of yourself? Not you controlling the Spirit, but the Spirit controlling you? Yes, sir. If 
the Spirit is controlling us. God's Spirit. God's way. Then we're about the business of learning how to walk. Listen to the word. Circumspectly. Yes, sir. That means you're not walking any old way. That's right. You're walking circumspectly. You're not throwing off strutting like those people do. Yeah. Yeah. Try to show you that there's somebody uh -huh. when there's nobody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're walking circumspectly. You're concerned about the steps you take. You're concerned about the words you speak. You're concerned about the principles you follow. You're concerned about the passion that you demonstrate for what you are demonstrating the passion. Mm -hmm. You're concerned about the relationship you have with your neighbor. Mm. You're concerned about the oneness that you feel in those who believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You're concerned about whether you are doing what God has called you to be. Be a witness in the world to which yes. he has sent you. careful about your wine drink. <laughs> for it has a lesson for you. And that is, you don't possess it. It possesses you. We have to be careful about running around talking about we got the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is to possess you. You can't turn on and off the Holy Spirit. Just when the Spirit celebrate, celebrates your power and desire to do the will of God. You don't turn that on. God's spirit works in you to move those things which are stubborn in your human nature to make you a holy being, to have powers and to exert a knowledge that otherwise you could not. Yes, sir. Not only do you need to walk circumspectly, as is said in that 17th verse, and not only do you need to be careful about your excess with wine and rather filled with the Spirit of God, but you need to recognize that if the Holy Spirit is in control of your life. Not only will you walk right, but your life will be a life of joy. Amen. I'm going to step out on the limb and say the reason we don't participate and do more as disciples of Jesus Christ is because we don't have real joy. Yes, If you are joyous yes. about who you are in Jesus, yes. then what you do for Jesus becomes a joy right. for you. Amen. When I was a boy growing up, I used to hear my grandfather say, after a preacher had just preached and preached and 
people were alive and moving about. Pops would say, oh, I wish I could preach that. And he'd say it more than once. Oh, I wish I could preach that. <laughs> and the reason he was saying it was because there was the stir of the Holy Spirit that made his calling plainer as he listened to others break the bread of life through the gospel that Jesus Christ had made possible. He became like a racehorse at the starting line, anxious to get off, anxious to run the race, anxious to speak the words, anxious to show the crowd. anxious to show the crowd because he was busy understanding what God's will is. Have you thought about it recently? What is God's will? God's will is that all men will be saved. Did you know that? That fellow that lives across the street that I don't like. God's will is for him to be saved. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it is. But how, what's the other? What's what's another part of that? God's will wanting them to be saved. That man across the street that I don't care about. God's will was to have Jesus die for my sins and then send me into the world to carry his word so that that man who I may not like but must love because of his love for me might be saved. why we have our hymns mm. yeah. yes. that we sing today. Mm. Mm. Yes. Because those folk who wrote them found joy in the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Amazing grace. Yes. Yes. How sweet the sound. Mm. Yes. 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 That saved. Yes. A wretch like me. I once yes. was blind. Now I see, was lost, but now I'm found. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when I'm found, I say like they did in Colossians, thanks for all things. I'm joyful, and the hymns I sing tell of my journey. They talk about my trouble. They talk about the deep pits that I was in. They talk about the shadows that have been a part of my life. They talk about the hurt that I have felt. They talk about the lostness that sometimes I have believed. But then there is the joy, but now I'm found. By the love of Jesus, I'm found. Now I'm happy. Not for a moment, but I'm happy with Jesus every day. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then I 
said. Yeah, yeah. After yeah. I've gotten through these struggles and these troubles, some mm. glad morning when this, this life is all yes. out. Yes. 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 Because I know God's will is for me to come home with him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to close today, right now, by asking you to give your life to understand fully and completely what God's will is all about. His will is not for you to become selfish with the blessings that he has given you. Amen. Amen. His will is that you would take the blessings that he has given you and make blessings for others. Yes, it is. You have no right to sit here today without having encouraged somebody yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. about the goodness of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. We have no right to celebrate 105 years, a generation that has lived long enough after those who have preceded us to enjoy the blessing that God has given to us without being concerned about that blessing being passed on to somebody else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We ought not feel comfortable being here unless we have touched somebody. Help them to know about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Now there may be somebody here today because he says that we're to be wise, we're to take wisdom and live by. And being wise is to accept God's word. That's what wisdom is, accepting God's word.